the Joe Rogan experience. Right. And, you know, right now also, like, with uh, the rise of China, they're also, you know, starting to, use, like, basically some form of, like, electronic tyranny, right? They're mm -hmm. able to, to really censor the Internet in a way that's been unprecedented. Uh, yeah. You can't access... Facebook, Wikipedia, Twitter, none of the, yeah. none of these things that you you and I can just like open on our, our apps can be accessed in, in China. So the way they just like control information, and now exporting those same tools to other authoritarian countries around the world is that part to me is dangerous because, you know, I think both Faisal and I came to America with this like, all right, this is the place that we can finally be ourselves and think for ourselves, right? Yeah. And we're starting to see that the whole world seems to be kind of going in the other direction. Did um. So there was a shift in China, and the shift was it was initially a completely communist society, and now capitalism, at least in a monetary sense, is embraced. Yeah, and market so, reforms, yes. Yes, so there's this giant shift in what China actually is, which corresponds to this huge growth. Is it possible that in the future, this shift could move on to other aspects of Chinese culture, like discourse or the way they view the government or even some form of democracy. That was what we expected. That's what we expected. Um, that was the theory. But, yeah. but the way China has behaved now, you know, they call it socialism with Chinese characteristics. That's mm -hmm. the official name of, of, of this long drawn game to, you know, institute market reforms, usher in uh, riches for the, for the middle class, lift a lot of people out of poverty, but in a very controlled way, in, in the way that's like, see, that's the thing about like Asian culture that people don't understand. It's that the, there's a fundamental difference between the China dream and the American dream, right? And, and Xi Jinping has outlined what he thinks is the China dream. It's, it's, it's basically a top-down way to, to – uh, it's a goal. It's a national goal. And, and basically what they're trying to say is that, okay, we're going to lift a lot of people out of poverty, but you have to – your generation has to make sacrifices. It's not about the individual. It's about building a strong China and implicitly also about uh, you know, ensuring that the CCP stays in power, the Chinese Communist Party stays in power. But it's, it's that you might have to give up you know, personal sacrifices for the sake of China versus the American dream is, is bottom up. It's about – your right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's it. And if you do that, that's the American dream. And if you achieve a certain level of happiness, if you achieve, you know, it's all like, it's bottom up. It's not, it's not centralized and it's not something that the Chinese government is kind of trying to stuff down your throat. Um, and China's willing to play the long game. So it is still a Leninist, Leninist Marxist government. Xi Jinping still believes in all of that. That's why it's still so totalitarian. But it's, you know, they, they know that, like, the way to get, gain power in the world is to get rich. And they did it on some, you know, on the, backs of, on the back of trade with other countries through very unfair practices, actually, in many cases. So if you think about, like, how they, I think there's, there are a lot of estimates of how much they've actually stolen from the United States in terms of intellectual property, um, corporate, corporate espionage. Um, now even, like, academia is being infected. So How so? They just arrested the head of the chemistry department at Harvard. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But wasn't that – They didn't they think that that guy was in connection with some weaponized – what was that? Oh, the article? virus thing? Yeah. No, no. no, no that, Am I thinking of something else? There was a, an article linking some Canadian researchers to that's the virus. Right. That's what it no, was. No, but this, this was this was different. The head of the, the chemistry department at Harvard was found to have lied about receiving money from the Chinese government. So there's this program called mm. the Thousand Talents Program in China. Basically, they're offering a lot of money. The New York Times did a really good expose on this. Um, they basically offer money to, like, academics. Because, you know, it kind of sucks to be one here in the sense of, like, you're not paid – that well, right. but China's dangling like a lot more money and say, okay, if you if you do research here in China, um, there's going to be like less bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's their way to lure these people in. Right? So he was hiding the fact that he was, he was getting hiding. income from correct, them. Correct. How was he hiding it? He just he didn't report it. Oh. And but he put it in the bank anyway. Right, and and so at the end of the day, when 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 you do when when there's a relationship there, China owns your research. Right. And if you're researching something sensitive, that's a big issue. <laughs>